Last Christmas still haunts me. It's time to let that go. No one cares. Everyone would be better off if I was never born. Did you see that? Did the power go out? Oh my god. I stood under the aurora and said everyone would be better off if I never existed. Well wish granted. Angel strikes every couple of weeks. How can that be? Do I know you? It's Winnie, you know that. Okay. This her? Hi, I'm Henry Waters. You're safe now. He's not gonna get you. No one in this town knows me. Who are you? Dad. You weren't around to stop him, so he just kept going. He likes killing. I'm here now. Let's have some fun. Hey, you. Hey. Merry Christmas. <laughs> we gotta stop him. <laughs> and get my life back. You'll be safe now. Please. What's up, everybody? It's Avatar Shea, a.k.a. Filmanista Scrooge, who I am 365 days of the year, not just Christmas time, reporting to you live with It's a Wonderful Knife. I enjoyed this movie for the most part. I think Christmas Christmas horror just isn't missing. You know what I mean? It isn't, it isn't missing, at least right now. I have a few more movies that I need to watch and get out to you guys, so we'll see if the trend declines or continues upward for the win. Is this a bull economy or is it a bear economy? Is the question that we have to ask when it comes to these movies. I'm gonna get into my overall thoughts about the movie. Like I said, for the most part, I enjoyed it. I think it was a refreshing spin on It's a Wonderful Life, that Christmas movie. It's a horror movie called It's a Wonderful Life. I feel like the title, I know that it was supposed to be punny and, and a callback to It's a Wonderful Life, but it is corny. <laughs> but that the film doesn't lose any points for that. It's just corny. This movie is starring Justin Long's teeth. Okay, I don't know if those were prosthetic or real, but they were obtrusive to me and my homegirl. They were violating the spot a lot, like just out there. You know what I mean? And if and if they real, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, Justin, for doing what you got to do. Get your teeth fixed and whitened and, and all of that. And also, they were the star of the show. So. One of the things that I really enjoyed about this movie is that it gets to the killing pretty early on and it has some pretty, pretty sick kills. Like there's one with a huge sharp candy cane and somebody else's head. You can tell that as with many slashers, this is inspired by the one and only Scream. The killer even has like this, I mean, it is called Angel Falls, don't get me wrong. And the, I guess their um, mascot of this town is an angel, a white angel, but it has a knife. And... You know, when you think of angels, you don't exactly think of knives, but but to be fair, the real depicting of angels, as the Christian Bible describes them, are horrific. So it might fit. It might fit if you feel me. I do. I think the acting and effects were terrible, at least in the at least in the beginning. It kind of sorted itself out towards the middle to the end of the movie. It has that Thanksgiving movie feel to it. And I feel like it could have been a part of a universe called the holidays. And this was Christmas, the, the part two, but not in the same town or something like an anthology sort of series. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. This is just my idea. Could have been, could have been, but it has that, that same feel to it. I didn't really have any jump scares and stuff like I did with Thanksgiving movie though. Not, not in this one. I think it was pretty obvious when the killer was going to show up. And not only that, it was not a who done it in a normal sense of the word. Like you in the beginning, you're wondering who done it, of course. But it, I think it's very obvious who the killer is going to be in the first five minutes of the movie. And then when he is unmasked, then the rest of the movie happens. You learn who the killer is up front. I thought that that was dope. I, of course, it it was a little weirder or different as the movie went on. And I bet you're like, well, if you know who the killer is, what's the whole point of the movie? We will get into it pretty soon and then <laughs> there was this gmc truck <laughs> product placement that was kind of nuts it was like really in your face like oc in your face I almost felt like the truck wasn't there they just kind of cgi'd it in i don't know it, it was just the way that the whole scene looked in that scene on to what the movie is about it's a wonderful knife is a 2023 american slasher film directed by tyler mcintyre and written by Michael Kennedy. It is a spin on the 1946 Christmas film, It's a Wonderful Life. However, instead of the lead character recognizing uh, his previous good deeds, the character Winnie discovers how many deaths she would have prevented in her own town had she not wished herself to not exist. This 
movie premiered on Shutter Streaming Services December 1st. And I think you can still find it there if you're interested in watching, which I actually recommend it. Wow, I'm recommending movies these days. I have grown up. I have evolved. I have a little more detail about the plot. Winnie Carruthers is the main character and she saves her town from a psychotic killer on Christmas Eve. Like I said earlier, you can pretty much pinpoint who the killer is very early on. I don't know if that's intended or not, but it is obvious. After the first slew of killings and then she killed the, the way that she saved the town is she ended up killing the killer and unmasking him, of course. A year later, she's still grieving. The rest of everybody else has moved on. Her best friend was killed by the killer. She ended up killing somebody. Even though it was an act of goodness, she feels troubled by this, and she's struggling with how the town just moved on as if nothing happened. So she gets rejected from college. Well, she found out that she's not getting into the college that she wants to. She found out that her boyfriend is cheating on her. She's still grieving her best friend's death, and... Everybody just expects her to kind of just move on and they act like she doesn't exist also. So she ends up under the Aurora, Aurora Borealis lights, the Northern lights. Somehow they can be seen from her town and she wishes that she was never born, that she never existed. Somehow she wakes up in an alternate reality where that is true and she gets to see just how many kills or people she would have saved if she had stopped him when she did. <laughs> so I feel like obviously it's a comedy horror movie it is not to be taken seriously but by the time she gets in the scene of this alternate universe where she doesn't exist the kill count is up to 27 i mean goddamn 27 kills in a year by one person granted this person has a lot of power and influence and is manipulating the hell out the system and the people of angelic falls it still would have like in real life right it would that would have never happened they would have made it to 27 and public kills at that. And I don't mean done in public. I just mean like they're not ones that people are finding the bodies of under stairs or dug up or somewhere or something like that. They just, person is dead and it's right in their face. The alternate reality killer has a different spin than the real reality, reality killer. And I thought that what they did with that was okay. I would have liked to see, even though that probably would have shattered the good ending, I would have liked to see that alternate reality killer spin also take place in the real version of her reality and she has to uncover that in the last whatever 10 20 minutes or whatever the movie i thought that the <laughs> all of the movie as she's forming this friendship with one person i kept saying are they lesbians are they lesbians are they lesbians this is a lesbian love story and it turns out to be although i think that they would have been better off as friends simply because that character really just needed people to care about her in a frank like period I don't know that in real life it would have been healthy for her to just jump into a relationship when she was about to, you know, stars. What do I give it? I think I give it a three and a half. I'm growing up. I'm liking stuff. I'm not that much of a Scrooge. I guess I'm being visited by the ghosts of movie past, present, and future right now because I'm growing up. Yeah, so three and a half. And I, like I said, I recommend it. It, it. it was pretty good fun. was not scary. Just a straight up slasher. If you are not into gore and things like that, you probably would not like it. So that is my review on It's a Wonderful Knife. Peace. Oh, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe because y'all be doing that. Make sure you do that. I got to get better at saying that, but you make sure you do that. Peace.